and welcome back for a discussion on yet another famous war or battle throughout history. Today we take a look at the shortest war ever, the Anglo-Zanzibar War, which was fought between the British and the Sultan of Zanzibar, Khalid bin Bargash, on August 27th, 1896. It only lasted 38 minutes. The reason for this war was the same as many others, resistance against foreign influence. This forced foreign influence had been happening for years. While one sultan, Said Said bin Sultan, spent his reign from 1806 to 1856 expanding their land and importance globally, the same wasn't true for all of the sultans. When Said died in 1856, his realm was divided, each having their own rulers. One of his sons, Thuwani bin Said, became sultan of Muscat and Oman, while another son, Majid bin Said, became Sultan of Zanzibar. Majid ruled Zanzibar from 1856 until his death in 1870. Bargash bin Said then became Sultan and ruled until 1888. Bargash was kind of skeevy, and let me tell you why. Throughout his reign, he was heavily influenced by European advisors and was also pretending he ended the slave trade, when in reality, he allowed it to continue for some time. So, he initially signed a treaty with the British with the intention of stopping the slave trade in Zanzibar, making it seem like he wanted the best for his people and was really sticking it to the oppressors. However, in the 1860s, it's assumed that he was actually quietly letting the slave trade continue in exchange for some cash. His two-faced dealings in the slave trade finally came to an actual end in 1873 when the British consul was given instruction to order the Sultan to stop the slave trade, else they would blockade Zanzibar. After being shown this ultimatum, Bargash signed yet another treaty two weeks later to immediately close the slave market. The British weren't their only problem, though. The Germans were also vying for control in the area. On October 29, 1886, a British-German treaty acknowledged the rule of the Sultan, but only over a 10-mile strip of land. This 10-mile strip of land wouldn't even remain under the Sultan's control, as it was later given to the Germans in 1888. While Bargash was alive, he had his brother, Khalifa, imprisoned for an alleged coup attempt and actively undermined him and his supporters until he died in 1888. Upon his death, Khalifa became Sultan. This was when the 10-mile strip of land was leased off to the Germans. Stick with me because it gets a little bit confusing at this point. Khalifa ruled until February 1890 and was succeeded by Ali bin Said Abu Saad, who ruled from February 13, 1890 to March 5, 1893, which was barely three years. Next came Hamad bin Thuwani Abu Saad, who only ruled from March 5th, 1893 until August 25th, 1896. Again, a little over three years. Hamad died very suddenly on August 25th, 1896, and is thought to have been poisoned by his cousin, Khalid bin Bugash al Basid. Khalid bin Bargash seized the throne, but the British said, no thank you. This was the third time that the British had actually passed up Bargash as Sultan, considering he was against British colonial rule and wanted the slave trade to continue while the British wanted it abolished. Him being passed up is why he just took the throne instead of waiting for permission. Zanzibar was actually a protectorate of the British, and as such, the British had to approve who was to become Sultan, and they did not approve of Khalid. His predecessor, Hamad, had been pro-British, and they wanted another pro-British sultan to make their lives easier, so they preferred Hamoud bin Muhammad over Khalid. Khalid had been given an ultimatum by the chief British diplomat, Basil Cave, to stand down and to vacate the palace, but he instead hunkered down in the palace and had gathered about 3,000 of his men by the end of the day. Keep in mind, this is all the very first day of his very short rule, August 25th. By the evening of August 25th, the harbor had a handful of British ships, two of which, the HMS Philomel and the HMS Rush, had already been anchored there, and the third, the HMS Sparrow, arrived quickly when the call for backup went out. On August 26th, the next day, 
The HMS Raccoon and the HMS St. George also entered the harbor, bringing the total to five British ships. To sum it up, the British had five of their best Royal Navy ships, and Khalid had about 3,000 supporters inside a wooden palace, along with some gifted artillery, and a sailing yacht in the harbor named the Glasgow. Cave also that day got the permission from the British government that they were waiting for. Do whatever necessary. The Telegraph stated, you are authorized to adopt whatever measures you may consider necessary and will be supported in your action by Her Majesty's government. Do not, however, attempt to take any action which you are not certain of being able to accomplish successfully. So basically, if you're going to act, it better be a sure thing. One final ultimatum was issued to Khalid, informing him he had until 9 a.m. to stand down and vacate the palace, or it was going to go down. The last time they heard from Khalid was at 8 a.m. on August 27th, stating, We have no intention of hauling down our flag, and we do not believe that you would fire upon us. Cave responded with the sentiment that he didn't want to fire on them, but unless you do as you are told, we shall certainly do so. At 9 a.m., as promised, the British began bombarding the palace. By 9.02 a.m., all of Khalid's artillery had been destroyed, and the palace was literally falling down around him and his 3,000 supporters. His sailing yacht, the Glasgow, was also immediately shot down, and the mast would actually remain visible in the harbor for the next 18 years. It's actually said that by this time, only two minutes after it started, Khalid fled out the back door of the palace like a punk. The war lasted only 38 minutes from the time the bombardment began to the time that they removed Khalid's flag, making this the shortest war in recorded history. Despite the war being so incredibly short, more than 500 of Khalid's men were dead or wounded with only one British officer being injured. After the British won the war, they installed their choice for Sultan, Hamoud, onto the throne where he served for six years. What happened to Khalid, you may ask? Well, after running out the back like a little rat, he was smuggled out by the Germans on October 2nd to German East Africa. He wouldn't be captured by the British until 1916. He lived in exile for a short time, but eventually was allowed to return to East Africa and lived there until his death in 1927. It really is such a shame that Khalid went through the effort of likely poisoning his cousin, initiating a war, and living in exile all for a shot at the throne for his reign to only last two days and cause so much harm and death in that two days. So there we have it, the shortest war in history clocking in at only 38 minutes. There was not another revolt in Zanzibar considering this astounding defeat. They actually remained a protectorate of Britain until this status was terminated in 1963. Thank you for joining me today to take a look at the Anglo-Zanzibar War. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you next time.